Hi all, today we are going to discuss about the boundary conditions. So these boundary conditions are derived from the integral form of the Maxwell's equations. Let us see the boundary conditions one by one. So first I am taking, there is a material which is having a permittivity of epsilon 2 in the second side and in the first side I am taking the epsilon 1 and there is a boundary between these two mediums. So I want to find at these boundary conditions. So for finding the boundary conditions, first one is for taking this electric field, I take the line integral and the line integral I will take the loop in such a way that it will be like this, that will that area that is enclosed will be in the left hand side when you are moving. So let us point them as A, B, C, D and the length of this, so let us take it as a delta L and this will be delta H is height of this medium. So let us assume the tangential component of electric field intensity is ET1 in the first medium and the tangential component in the second medium is ET2. Okay. So now, in order to find this electric field, we know closed integration of E dot DL is equal to dou by dou T of surface integral of B dot DS. This is what we have seen from Maxwell's equations. So now I am taking the limit of delta H tends to 0, what will be the equations of these things. So line integral of E dot DL will be equal to, so take the line integral as the delta H tends to 0, so this side that means BC as well as AD will become 0. So only components that will be remaining are AB and CD. So when you are moving along AB, you are moving in the same direction as tangential component. So this will become ET1 multiplied by delta L. Okay. And going to B to C, B to C as delta H tends to 0, it becomes 0. And coming from C to D, C to D you are going against the direction of the tangential component. So it will become ET2 into delta L. Again D to A, again it will become equal to 0. So this is what we get. So now coming to the right hand side. So right hand side limit of delta H tends to 0, I want to calculate the surface integral of B dot ds, the surface integral of B dot ds. So as the delta H tends to 0, because we know that area, area of the surface or the delta S will be equal to delta H multiplied by delta L. So as the delta H tends to 0, that means this becomes 0, this area will become equal to 0. I am repeating again, the surface is equal to delta H multiplied by delta L. As delta H is taken as approaching to 0, the area will approach towards 0 because 0 multiplied by anything will be nearly equal to 0. Or we can tell this right hand side of this equation will become equal to 0. As you are approaching, the height tends to 0. So from this, combining these two, we can tell that ET1 minus ET2 multiplied by delta L is equal to right hand side is equal to 0 or from this I can tell that ET1 will be equal to E22. This is what we get. So now coming to the calculating the second one for calculating the D, we can better go for the surface integral. So for that I am taking a surface. So let us assume I am taking a surface. So here the normal component. So this is a DN2. Let us take the normal component in the first medium is DN1. And this height is equal to delta H. Here also delta H will tends to 0. And let us assume it is having a surface charge density. That surface charge density let us represent by rho S. And this surface area delta S I am representing here. So this I am going to use for calculating the normal component. So this I am going to use the relation closed surface integral of D dot DS is equal to volume integral of rho V dV. This relationship I am going to use. So in here, as the delta H tends to 0, the sides become equal to 0. Only top and the bottom is there. On the top side, you can see the direction of the surface will be same as the direction of dn. Whereas in the bottom, the direction of the surface growth will be like this. But dn1 is opposite. So that's why dn2 will be taken as positive and dn1 will be taken as negative. So this will become dn2 minus dn1. So multiplied by delta S, that is the value we get. This will be equal to this volume integral of rho V dV, I can write as rho S multiplied by delta S because volume integral of rho V dV gives the charge that is enclosed by that surface. So this can be applied by because surface charge density is given rho S multiplied by delta S. So that gives how much value of charge enclosed. Or from this, I can tell that dN2 minus dN1 will be equal to rho S. This is the equation we got. So, let us assume that interface does not have any surface charge. That means, if there is no surface charge, so in that case, 
dn2 minus dn1 this will be equal to 0 or dn2 will be equal to dn1. So, in this way you have to find it. So, let us see the magnetic boundary conditions now. So, for calculating the magnetic boundary conditions again same thing let us assume the second medium is having permeability of mu2 and the first medium is mu1. So, I am taking the line integral of this one again let us assume. So, this differential length I am representing dl or delta l and height I am representing by delta h. So, I am taking the point in the same way a b c d. So, I will move from a to b, b to c, c to d and d to a. So, from this I can write that closed integral of h dot dl is equal to surface integral of j dot ds plus dou by dou t of surface integral of d dot ds. This we have already seen. So, now this as the delta h tends to 0, the closed integration of h dot dl, this will be h t 1 minus h t 2 multiplied by delta l, because delta h is tending to 0 only on the top component and the bottom component we have to take. Now, taking the right hand side limit of delta h tends to 0 surface integral of j dot ds, this will be equal to, let us assume the surface this current density I am representing by k. The, that so this will become k multiplied by delta l because this will be current enclosed line charge density so this will be limit of delta h tends to 0 do by do t of d dot ds this will be surface integral because again differential surface is coming as the h tends to 0 the surface becomes equal to 0 so that's why this component will be equal to 0 or from this i can tell that h t 1 minus h t 2 is equal to k times of delta l. So, this multiplied by delta l is there right or from this I can tell that h t 1 minus h t 2 is equal to k. This is what we got getting it. If the boundary has no conduction current, if no conduction current is there, then in that case we can tell h t 1 minus h t 2 this will be equal to 0 or from this I can tell that h t 1 will be equal to h t 2, this is what we got. So, now coming to calculation of the B, again for that I am taking a surface. So, I am taking a surface like this. So, this is the normal component. So, this is my B n 2, this is my value of B n 1 and let us assume this surface is having this delta s. Yes. So, now again applying this one closed integration of b dot ds this is equal to 0 this is what we have seen. So, again as the h is equal to 0 so sides we need not consider only top and the bottom we have to count. So, this will become b n 2 minus b n 1 into delta s is equal to 0 or from this we can get b n 2 is equal to b n 1. So, normal component 2 will be equal to normal component 1. So, in order to clarify this completely let us take one example. So, that this topic will be completely clear to you. So, it is given the unit vector 0 0.48 ax minus 0 0.6 ay plus 0.64 az is directed from region 2, this region 2 properties are given epsilon r2 is equal to 2.5 then mu r2 is equal to 2 and conductivity is equal to 0 towards region 1 epsilon r1 is equal to 4 mu r1 is equal to 10 and conductivity is equal to 0. If h1 is given by minus 100 in the direction of x minus 50 in the direction of y plus 200 in the direction of z sin 400 t. This is in amperes per meter at point P in region 1 adjacent to the boundary. So, it is in the boundary at the boundary this is the value given. So, it is asked find the amplitude at P of hn1 ht1 hn2 and d h2 these are given so let us see how to calculate them 
in order to solve them first you try to represent this pictorially so pictorial i am representing this the normal component is given that is normal component is unit vector the unit vector is 0.48 ax minus 0.6 ay plus 0.64 az so this is the tangential component so this is the region 1 and this is region 2 so here epsilon r1 is there mu r1 is there and sigma 1 Similarly, epsilon r2, mu r2 and sigma 2. This epsilon r1 is given as 4, this is given as 10 and this is 0. So, this is given as 2.5, this is given as 2 and 0. This is what is given. So, I have represented the diagram. So, now h is entering at the boundary. So, h may be inclined at some angle. So, h may be inclined at some angle. So, this is my value of the h. So, it is asked to find the other components. So, let us see one by one component in detail. So, first one is it is asked to find the value of h and 1 normal component. How to find the normal component? It is a projection of a vector in that particular direction can be that vector taken the dot product with the unit vector. So, that is why I am taking the dot product with the unit vector. So, this will become minus 100 times of ax minus 50 times of ay plus 200 times of az sin 400t. So, this will be taken the dot product with 0 0.48 times of ax, 0 0.6 times of ay, 0 0.64 times of az. So, this if you simplify this will become minus 48 plus 30 plus 128 sin 400t that will be equal to 110 sin 400t. So, from this I can calculate my vector hn1, hn1 I can find by whatever is the magnitude that magnitude I can multiply with the unit vector that gives the direction magnitude multiplied by the direction vector. So, that is why this will be 110 sin 400t. So, this one I have to multiply with the unit vector 0 0.48 in the direction of a8 minus 0 0.6 in the direction of a y 0 0.64 in the direction of a z. So, if you simplify this you will get it as 52.8 in the direction of a x minus 66 in the direction of ay plus 70.4 in the direction of az sin 400t. So, this is the way you have to calculate. If you want to calculate the magnitude, magnitude will be square root of x square plus y component square plus z component square. That gives the magnitude of this particular wave. So, now coming to the value of tangential component ht1. ht1 to calculate it, we know the value of the any vector will be having two component. One is the normal component another one is tangential component this will be h n 1 plus h t 1. So, from this h t 1 will be equal to h 1 minus h n 1 because only up to two components we can resolve any vector. So, this will be h 1 minus h n 1. So, h 1 is minus 100 in the direction of a x 50 in the direction of a y plus 200 in the direction of a z minus 52.8 in the direction of ax minus 66 in the direction of ay plus 70.4 in the direction of az multiplied by sin 400t. So, all are multiplied by sin 400t. So, if you simplify this, you will get it as minus 152.8 in the direction of ax plus 16 in the direction of ay plus 129.6 in the direction of az. So, this will be multiplied by sin 400 so, now the third component again magnitude will be square root of x square plus y square plus z square using that I can calculate. So, now it is asked to calculate h n 2 what is the value of h n 2. So, we know from the boundary conditions b n 1 is equal to b n 2 b is nothing but mu into h. So, this way I can write as mu n 1 into h n 1 is equal to mu n 2 into h n 2. So, mu again I can write as mu naught into mu r, mu naught mu r can cancel both sides. So, from this I can calculate my h n 2 is equal to mu r 1 divided by mu r 2 multiplied by h n 1. So, this way I can calculate. So, same thing I am substituting here, this will be 10 divided by 2 into h n 1, h n 1 will be 52.8 in the direction of a x minus 66 in the direction of a y plus 70 in the direction of a z sin 400t. So, if you simplify this, you will get it as 26.4 in the direction of ax minus 330 in the direction of ay. This will be 264 will come right 52.8 into 5. 
okay now this will be 352 in the direction of az this overall thing will be sin 400t so now the last one it is asked calculate the value of h2 so h2 will be hn2 plus ht2 you agree with me so we have seen from the boundary condition the tangential component one will be equal to tangential component two so this will become hn2 plus ht1 okay since ht1 is equal to ht2 at the boundary conditions so i am directly writing the answer when you substitute the things you will get your answer as 111.2 in the direction of ax minus 314 in the direction of ay plus 481.6 in the direction of az this will be sine 400t so i hope how to calculate the boundary conditions magnetic and electric boundary conditions for time varying fields is completely clear to you if you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below i will answer to your queries from there thank you thank you very much